Today I'm in the Trudos Mountains um, in the centre of Cyprus. Um, I'm having a look around what was the site of the original British Army camp here, um, constructed in 1878. Uh, the soldiers that were normally uh, stationed around the coast in support of the Egyptian campaign uh, in the Near East um, just found it too hot uh, marshy and surrounded by insects during the summer months. Um, so they essentially retreated up the nearly 2,000 metre high Trudos Mountains and established Trudos Camp. Um, the British still have a presence up here um, with a radar station um, and camp at, on Trudos and Olympus Mountain. Um, but uh, the sites are different than the original uh, encampment, which I'm coming to now. Um, it's hard to tell. I haven't, I haven't yet done any detailed research in this site. Um, but it's hard to tell exactly when um, the camp was occupied until. But I would imagine, um, judging by some of the the graves in the nearby military cemetery, that that was. Um, included the First World War, there was still um, occupation up here, and, and, it, and there has been ever since. Um, I think I'm coming into the west of the camp. Um, there is a spring, you can see the, the modern pump house on top of the hill. So there's a natural spring providing fresh water um, to the hill, uh, to the, sorry, to the, to the camp that was just, um, just off the crest of the hill, down in a, um, in a little valley. Uh, the camp would have essentially been uninhabitable during the winter months um, because it, it just got too cold with, uh, with thick snows um, and heavy freezing so the troops would then have, have moved back down um, to the coast uh, where it would be warmer during the winter months. Uh, there are certain parts of the camp which I, which I think are probably um, some of the original parts of the camp. Um, like this, this hut base so it's, been, it's been terraced out of the side of the hill. This was most likely some sort of accommodation um, hut base. Uh, and there are a number of these. As we go down the hill, um, we see quite see quite a few of these. Uh, a number of other nice little features, uh, just reminding us um, of the presence here. Um, and I'll, I'll try and get down to it and show you. There, there are a number of boundary stones. Um, they are unmarked, so they're not uh, the typical. Um, sort of WD War Department or um, Ordnance Board stones, um, but I am pretty confident they were um, they were constructed uh, with with crude concrete uh, just to to denote the uh, the boundary of the camp. Um, very scenic place, very beautiful um, and quiet. It's uh, it's early December now, um, so the the cold weather hasn't quite hasn't quite got here yet. Um, but it's a, it's a great place to come to come hiking just before that, um, before the snowfall and the winter sports start. There are some you may you may start to see them just here. There are some, some tin buildings left on the site. Some bases like this, uh, this one that I'm, I'm just on now, that have um, that have some modern cement, um, yeah, as a floor covering. But it has it has modern looking cement, uh, but there's a large large tree going through it, um, perhaps suggesting this was um, this was maybe abandoned in the uh, maybe anywhere between the, the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And as I said, I mentioned the, the small military cemetery earlier, um, so we can uh, we can bring you down there and have a look. But there are there are graves. I think the latest grave was 1949, um, a civilian um, civilian grave there. Um, yeah, so let's let's have a look at some of these some of these buildings.
So this one probably my probably my favourite, um, just because it's a it's a total patchwork of um, some corrugated iron. It's obviously been recycled, um, and then you've uh, some other some other kind of flat sheet that has has been recycled, maybe from some canisters or, um, or old jerry cans. aged wooden shutters um, with evidence of, uh, of, of quite a lot of bullet holes around this um, whether that was board soldiers or uh, board hunters that, that sort of frequent these forests um, and yeah, so here we are inside this Workshop. There's a there's a trough here. Um, looks very similar to um, to, to sort of much older improvised toilet troughs for troops, um, or it, it may have been reused, may have been constructed for um, for animals. Um, it may be a feeding trough. There's, there's lots of hay on the um, hay on the floor. But yeah, almost totally improvised. Um, it looks like just with off cuts of wood um, and some other round timbers. Maybe up the walls. So yeah, probably the most the most improvised of the of the buildings on the site. Oh, and yes, there's. I think I'll start at the top and work my way down. So yeah, we we fresh water coming from the spring, um, where we started, and then as we as we come up this part. Camp is a, I think the correct term is dry closet. Um, so this essentially just is a is a latrine dug into the ground. Um, it's been it's been capped with uh, with modern concrete. You can see whether the whether the light permits. You can see the wooden the old wooden toilet seat covering boards in there, and then this would have been the the cubicle that sat over the top. Still see the the ceramic insulators uh, for the uh, twin flex electric cable. So at least at one stage, it did have electric light. Uh, sorry, I may seem slightly out of breath, but just as a reminder, I am at uh, 2,000 meters above sea level. The air is no good. Pretty thinner up here, and it's a reasonably steep hill. So if we forget about the, the large reinforced concrete block in the background, uh, we have another uh, little sort of ablution block, so toilets washing up. Uh, the stairs to the top floor have been, uh, have rotted away, but certainly in the downstairs room, uh, have, some, have some features remaining, I think these were or shower or, or bath cubicles. Uh, around here you can see the little soap dish, stone window, um, electric cabling, some, uh, some light and electric fittings. Um, and yeah, I'm not, not sure what the history of this, this large building is, um, but it certainly looks to be reasonably poor quality concrete that's just, just been abandoned for quite a while. Uh, we come around the other side of this. Uh, I guess sort of toilet block there, yeah we can see the we can see the toilet cubicles there. Uh, some of the pipe work. Uh, we can see where the, the boiler room's in here. that have been, been running warm water um, and electricity just from what we've, what we've seen there uh, so now let's, now let's start start our descent down the hill uh, to where that riverbed is oh. it's, a, 
sign a nature trail sign on the floor obviously yeah much more much more water on this campus so I think this is the we're approaching the most modern building on site looks like some sort of some sort of lodge um, for recreation Stone, stone oven, very common around Cyprus um, and really the Mediterranean. Um, these stone, stone ovens. Um, yes, yeah, so let me let me try and rest you there. I'll pick you up when I get inside. I'll just open glass. Um, evidence, so we've got some. Some five five six blank rounds, um, evidence of of military training here. So yeah, we have this uh, this sort of lodge area. Um, so it looks like maybe some kitchen area there. I just walked past. There's a little toilet, um, carpeted rooms, possibly bedrooms. Brackets on the wall here, maybe for folding desks, folding benches. Yeah, much more modern, I could, I could probably say. Maybe 80s or 90s, what was constructed. That's right, let's go. Yeah, let's go down the hill. And we'll see another couple of these, um, of these tin buildings. Um, yeah, I'm not sure whether you know, but I. <laughs> I really have a thing for tin buildings. Um, you know, they were, they were so so temporary. Uh, you know, never designed to last, but yet, yet we have 100, 120 year old tin buildings. In some cases, still in use, um, especially around the, the military training estate around the UK. A lot of the a lot of the First World War camps are still still in use as um, or the, the blocks, at least as transit accommodation. Sort of weekend training reserve and cadets. Uh, coming down, uh, this wonderful tin building. Yeah, it's a bit like a large hole out the front, but not, not entirely sure what that would have been for. and have a look. sign of, of water fittings or anything. Um, just yeah, a couple of electrical sockets. Um, electricity here. Crystal manufacturer. Lovely little light fitting. Yeah. Oh, that's a, good, a lovely single piece. Sink in the corner. There you can see the detail of the walls. Looks like, looks like bamboo. So it looks like split bamboo in the walls. Um, you know, the very chunky plaster. Um, that has come off on there. Fascinating. Perhaps the bamboo brought back from the from the Egyptian campaigns. And then there's obviously a little, yeah, little toilet cubicle at the end. What the hell is this? Oh, part of a cast iron bed frame. Yeah, 
certainly certainly betraying the age of this of this camp. Well, that's what I was thinking. That has to be that has to be nineteenth century. Definitely worth a look when I get home. Um, and yeah, certainly if I if I find out what age that is, I'll be I'll be post something up in the comments. Um, or the description. And then finally, last little building here. Um, but first I'll delete the site and I'll, I'll pick you up when we get to the cemetery. Uh, is this. So we have the, we have the river just below us. I can set the camera without smashing it. There's an absolutely interesting spring, built in from the spring, doesn't reach there. So I imagine that's a, a that sort of spring summertime river whenever the uh, whenever the snow and frost melts. Um, possibly a water tank here. Um, this was some type of some type of pump house um, or boiler room. Let's see what we can what we can see inside. So there are a number of number of, of concrete plinths on the floor. Um, there's a couple just here, probably for probably for pump equipment. Uh, generators perhaps, we've seen signs of electricity. Um, so that would have to be generated. Um, another another plinth here and here. So lovely old wooden furniture. Uh, I imagine the furniture hasn't hasn't moved too far, so it was was here at some stage. There's a crate, OHMS, on his, probably at the time, Majesty's service, uh, Limassol. Uh, so who knows, who knows what that was going um, Definitely, definitely clues to the, to the military use of this building. Um, oh, we have some, I'm going to lift you high up so you can see the, the writing and the manufacturer's marks on the inside of the corrugated iron. So you can see, so now we see we have Limassol, which you can see it right at the apex there. Limassol, so looks like a locally sourced uh, corrugated iron. Uh, probably to the um, to the War Department specifications, uh, as is often the case. So if I come down the hill, there's one last thing I want to show you here, if I can remember how to get to it. And that is the, the boundary stone I alluded to earlier. Um, there it is, I can see it. You can see it in front of me. Um, and the, the place is littered with detritus, so there's, uh, there's little tin cans. You know, all the food would have been uh, tinned, not much fresh up here. Um, I think it was a, I think it was a, a two day, two day trek and, uh, and donkey cart ride to get up here from the post. Um, yeah, here's the the boundary stone. I have seen a number of others uh, on the other side of camp, just as I was walking in. Um, yeah, as I say, not not marked WD uh, um, or or um, ordnance board board stamped, um, but almost almost certainly um, a, a stone for the for the original camp here um, on Trudos, dating to um, I think 1878. Was the first occupation here. So I'm going to leave this camp now um, and make my way across to the uh, to the military cemetery, which isn't too far away. I just don't particularly want to um, walk all the way with you. Um, so I will pick you up when I get to the military cemetery. So just as I was leaving to go down to the cemetery. I came across another row of boundary stones. Um, this one, however, I've noticed, and one of the others, is actually marked. So there's, so there's, there's a number two. Um, it looks like perhaps could have been a C, uh, perhaps a, an E, a 
first I thought maybe it was um, it was ER, but no, um, the dates dates are all wrong. Um, so I have to I have to now go down another rabbit hole of, of finding out what this this boundary stone could have said. Um, but yeah, I'll, t I'll take you up. And let's have a look at um, if any of these other stones now have these markings. Because as well as tin buildings, of course, boundary stones are a, a favourite of mine. Um, quite often because they, once the, the temporary camps have, have been removed, all that's left is the, is the boundary stone. Uh, yeah, another, another boundary stone. Uh, doesn't appear to have any particular markings. One more. I have to put it down to think of this, uh, this building. Let's go and have a look at it. Uh, nice mountain bike tracks in the parcel. Ah, here it is. Okay. Don't slip with a camera in the channel. in better condition than the others. Uh, perhaps a little bit maybe in construction. Or it's just been sheltered uh, and buried, protected from the elements. Maybe maybe there are some markings that are just apparently hidden. So walk down this track, we'll get to the military cemetery. So for a second time, I will see you at the military cemetery.
So that was the Kudos Military Cemetery. Um, the earliest grave in there appears to be 1859. Uh, a soldier from the Royal Engineers. Um, so probably before the um, before the, the British encamped up here permanently during the summer months, I'm sure it was. Um, they were coming up here for resources. Whether it be wood, um, or any of the other the stonework made from quarry from up here. Um, so yeah, hopefully you you enjoyed this this video a little bit different um, from my winter holiday to Cyprus. Uh, that was the a tour of the 18 or uh, 19th century um, British camp up on Trudeau's. Um, yeah, well, I will continue this. Continue this hike and see what else. Uh, see what else I can find. But in the meantime, if you're enjoying these 360 videos or any of the other videos uh, on my channel, uh, please, yeah, give me a give me a thumbs up, uh, like the video, or subscribe uh, for more content. Um, I'm not I'm not working to your schedule. Um, I just quite enjoy sharing uh, sharing some of the places I've been uh, in this in, in 360 in this immersive. Uh, in this immersive way. So yeah, thanks very much, and I will see you in the next one.